So, how do you start designing a watch? We're going to focus on four key areas. The case, the dial, the hands, and then the strap or bracelet. One of the biggest things that contributes to the shape and the style of a watch is the movement inside it. So what is a movement? You might have heard the words movement, calibre. What are these? Well, these are usually a little round circle, about five, six millimetres thick, about 20 to 30 millimetres in diameter. And this is the powerhouse of the watch. This is the engine of the watch. Why does this have so much impact? Well, there is, of course, variations, some smaller, some larger. Some do more than just tell the time. They tell date. They have a chronograph, a stopwatch function, a second time zone. There's all kinds of features. But those movements can vary in a hundredth of a millimetre, and that can completely change the design of a watch because everything has to be built around the movement. How are we going to power this? Is it going to be powered by battery? or mechanical, and if it's mechanical, will it be manual wound, which means you have to wind the watch every single day to power it, or will it be automatic winding, which means that when you move your wrist, there is a rotor that spins and winds the watch, but the automatic winding sounds like the perfect solution, but it adds one to two millimeters to the thickness of the watch. It limits what you can do on the design side. So these are all the push-pull from either side coming together to work out. Now, I don't want to use the word compromise, but it is something that when you start designing a watch, the very first sketches, those will be absolutely without any regard to the practicalities. So on the aesthetics, you want to ensure it's going to go around the wrist. Every single person has a different profile on their wrist. So you have to find a shape that is comfortable whether your wrist is small or large, whether it's bony, or whether it is completely smooth. And so that means that when you're looking at the design, you want it to sit close to the wrist, but you don't want to sit flat on the wrist. And they can be finished in different ways. So if you have a precious metal like gold or platinum, or sometimes silver, but silver tarnishes, so increasingly isn't used in watch cases, the way it will look its finest is when you polish it, and a hand polish at that. It brings out the luster of the metal. Whereas if you go steel, it looks fantastic when it's brushed. But then you look at titanium, fantastic material increasingly being used in the watch industry. Well, the thing with titanium, it's very, very difficult to refinish. So that results in a lot of titanium watches being sandblasted, so a frosted coating. You pick your metal, you pick your finishing. Now we've got a couple of things to consider. One of them is the winding crown. This is the item that usually sticks out at three o'clock on the right-hand side of the watch. Why does it do that? Most people are right-handed, and therefore, traditionally, they wear the watch on the opposite wrist. So therefore, you want the winding crown to be easily accessible with the right hand when you go to wind it or adjust the time. The second thing to consider with a case after the winding crown is the crystal. Now, Sometimes people call it the crystal. You can think of it as the glass. It's the see-through bit covering the dial. Now, the crystal is very interesting because historically they were always made out of glass and then out of plastic. The reason they moved from glass to plastic was glass, very nice, very clean, often flat, but it would shatter when hit. Whereas plexiglass didn't shatter, but does scratch very easily. Nowadays, almost everyone uses a type of synthetic man-made sapphire, sapphire crystal. And as a result, we now refer to the glass as the crystal. Let's move on to the second item, which is the watch dial. Now, a lot of people will refer to this as the face of the watch. So think of dial and face as the same things. When you look at a watch dial, you've got to do several things. On the one hand, you've got to convey information like hours, minutes, seconds. But on the other side, it's basically a blank sheet of paper. Let's start with color. 80% of all watch dials are black. Now that is a bizarre stat because that's not always been the case. But today, 80% of all watch dials are black. So you start off with that going, right, what are the basic colors? Black, silver, blue. 
So I'm talking about 10% of watch dials being silver, and a lot of people will look in a shop window or look online and go, no they're not, there's white. White is one of the most popular dial colors. And this is where it's interesting. It is and it isn't. So most of the dials that people would consider white are actually silver. And if you use a silver coating on a dial out of 99.9% .9 pure silver, it actually comes across as white, not silver gray. White itself as a color is very, very rare. But then right at the bottom, you've got this wonderful section of other color. Sapphire blue, emerald green, ruby red. These rich tones come alive on a watch dial. You then go the other way, and every decade, you will see a resurgence of colors like mustard yellow, burnt orange, or coral pink. And these colors are often done with a particular type of finish called lacquer where you end up with a richness and a glossiness to the surface. It's about the finishing. And when we refer to the finishing on a dial, we're talking about, does it have a sunburst brushed effect? You can also have a vertical brush, a horizontal brush, again, changing how the light interacts with the dial. Or, at this point, we really should be calling it the watch face because the finishing and the color bring it to light. I said right at the start about the practical things like the numerals, the hours, the minutes, the seconds. There are three basic options. The first is to go for index batons, or you go for what is often referred to as Arabic numerals. Now, we should technically say Western Arabic numerals. These are numerals one, two, three, four, as we would know and read. And then the third type of numeral, very popular on clocks and very popular on pocket watches, is the Roman numeral. The I, the IV, the V, the X, the XI, and again, can be a very beautiful, very elegant look. Now, we say watch hand because you view all the hands as individual parts on the dial. How important are they? Well, as a starting point, there is a golden rule. The hour hand is two thirds of the length of the minute hand. Now, you might have a slight variation but if you look at almost any wristwatch today, the hour hand is two thirds the length of the minute hand. I mentioned about the dial having different finishes to reflect the light as you move it. That's the same with the hand. If you put a bevel down the center of the hand, it means that at whatever position the hand is on the dial, one half of the hand will always reflect light. So it won't act as a mirror and go black, it will reflect some light. The color of hands is important. There needs to be a contrast with the dial. It's very simple. You have a dark dial, you want light colored hands. You have a light colored dial, you want dark hands. So this is when we look at the different strap options. Straps split down into two sides, material and metal. Now, when you're considering the material, it's gotta be something that ticks off many different properties. First is, is it hard wearing? This is gonna be exposed to the elements. It's something that's gonna be rubbing against the cuff of a shirt. Two, what color is it? Because if you have a dial that is a certain color, you may not want to pair it. It may be mixing and matching just a bit too far. And then the third one is how does it fasten? Leather is a wonderful material to use for watch straps. Now, what kind of leather has changed over the years? So the very first wristwatches from the late Victorian and early Edwardian period were attached using a pigskin. This was used right through into the 1920s and 1930s. Hard wearing, tough, but can also be used in very, very slim and very thin sections. Today, we use calf leather. But if you go back to the 50s and 60s, the most prevalent type of watch strap was alligator. So it's very interesting to see how in different periods, different levers have become more popular, come in and out of fashion. But calf leather is the most popular today. 90% of leather watch straps are black. 8% are a shade of brown. So what is that 2%? Well, it is other color. And within that, blue is a firm favorite. Why? Because you can wear a blue strap on almost any watch dial and you can wear a blue strap with a suit as easily as you can wear it with jeans. We now come to the third thing about a leather watch strap. How is it fastening onto the wrist? 
there are two options. The first is for a pin buckle. Think of it like a belt buckle, just in miniature form. The second is called a deployant clasp. And the way this works is basically it's like having a metal wing that can open and shut. And the advantage of this is the strap attaches to this metal wing, it opens and clips shut. That way you don't have to bend the leather strap backwards and forwards every time you put it on the wrist. So the other kind of strap is a metal strap or more commonly known as a bracelet. Like the case, it all comes down to the metal it's made out of and therefore the finishing you can do. If you have a bracelet that is polished, it looks very formal, it looks very luxurious. However, it will become a scratch magnet. So if you're going to be wearing your watch and it's on a metal bracelet and you're going to be in an environment where it's likely to get marked and scratched, you may want to go for something that has a more brushed or frosted finish to it. But the most important thing when you're considering whether it is a strap or it is a bracelet is making sure that it is an option that highlights the beauty of the watch you've created. Thank you very much for sticking with me this long. You are now officially a watch geek and know everything there is to know about what goes into a wristwatch. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and please find links to more watch-related content in the description below.